It's a jolly good day for a milking. It's a glorious day to play milk. Synthesizer. It's a rather splendid time for some ladder fills of fun. Bring some patch cables along here. Yeah, we've only just begun. It's a jolly good day for a milking. It's a wonderful day to play milk. Grab your partners, come along here. Yeah, let's all sing this pipe of song here. Yeah, yes. It's a jolly good day to play a milk. I'm not weird. You are. Now, I've been making uh, synthesizer-centric content for five years now, and uh, despite the fact that Bob Moog is probably the most famous person in synth history, I have never done a Moog feature video. Uh, and the reason is because uh, it's been historically difficult for me to get a hold of Moog synthesizers. And on the two occasions that I did manage to borrow a vintage Moog for such a video, it died on me and I was unable to complete the video. So Moog content remains a glaring omission on my channel until now, because uh, I'm glad to say I've been able to get hold of some modern Moogs that aren't going to die on me due to being full of 50 year old components. So we've got the Matriarch and we've also got the Sound Studio comprising the uh, Subharmonicon, the DFAM and the Mother 32. Uh, first, let's have a look at the Matriarch. <laughs> So that was a straight out of the box jam. That was the first thing I did with it when it arrived. And already it sounds fat and alive and very analog. I would expect no less from a company like Moog. But I was barely doing anything there. I was just using the front panel controls. Um, and the beauty of this synth, of course, is it's got all these patch points. It can be configured and reconfigured in all sorts of different ways. So let's have a deeper look. <laughs> So those were just two of the many kinds of bass sounds you can get out of the Matriarch. In the first example, I was making use of the voice modes uh, and the discrete sync and modulation of the individual VCOs so that I had something different happening with every new key press. Uh, and in the second example, I was using some audio rate modulation of uh, two of the VCOs and the filters. And what I wanted to get across was the real stereo-ness of the Matriarch uh, to the point that you can take two of the VCOs into one of the filters and one of the VCAs, use one of the envelope generators and even one of the LFOs, and then take the other two oscillators into the other filter, into the other VCA, and use uh, the other envelope generator and the other LFO, and have two completely independent synthesizers coming out of the one instrument. Uh, that sounds like this. So you can go from a sound that's right down the middle out to something that is very stereo, which has different things happening left and right, all the way out to completely independent synthesizers on the left and right in terms of CVs, gates, everything. Uh, and so that is a huge amount of flexibility. But wait, there's more. You can play 
four-note polyphony with paraphonic articulation, hence paraphony on the end. Uh, and that sounds like this. Now, because that is paraphonic in terms of its articulation and you can only play four notes because you've only got four oscillators, uh, it's limited, but it's actually very usable. And to have that benefit alongside all the other stuff you can do, uh, I don't think is to be sniffed at. And the final thing I wanted to do was just make more use of these patch points, hooking it up with my modular setup behind me uh, and do a kind of mini track with it uh, and see where we can go with that. So if you were in the market for an analog monosynth, but you were concerned that it would become boring over time or that its limitations would uh, mean that it only has particular applications and it would spend a lot of time switched off, then the Matriarch is a really interesting solution because of the four oscillators, the dual filters, the dual amps, the dual envelopes, dual LFOs, the utilities, the attenuators, attenuverters, and this stereo analog delay plus all these patch points, and there's even more on the rear, because it's then so much more reconfigurable than most monosynths out there, certainly basic monosynths. So you might think that's a better investment over time. Any reasons you wouldn't buy it? I think the only thing I could think that was a downside perhaps was by design, it doesn't have a screen. They didn't forget it. It's not there by design. But that does mean that some of the additional features and functions, which are great, have to be accessed through some slightly clunky key presses. A compromise of this kind of design, but certainly not a deal breaker. And it's nice to have those things in addition to all of this stuff uh, rather than leave it off because there's no screen. But overall, I've had a huge amount of fun playing with the Matriarch uh, and I think it's a really great synth. Okay, next, the sound studio. So as with the Matriarch, I set it up set the camera rolling and filmed and recorded the first thing I came up with to capture that out of the box experience.
So we're up and running, and in very basic terms, you've got a percussion or drum synthesizer, you've got a mono synth, and you've got a polyrhythmic subharmonic synthesizer. And because they've got their own normal signal paths and their own sequencers, all you need to do is just sync them up, and then off you go. And you could play around with that for hours and hours and hours. But of course, the wonderful thing about this is they have these patch panels, so you can reconfigure them within themselves, reconfigure them within the sound studio, or you can break them right out and connect them up with all sorts of other weird and wonderful gear. So I'm going to do a series of short performances, compositions, whatever you want to call them, um, using the sound studio in different ways. Um, the first bunch are going to be kind of groove based, and then the last two are going to be a bit more experimental.
So for me, this was just really addictive. I could have gone on and on coming up with little jams and compositions and trying it out in different contexts because there's the obvious stuff that they do that's apparent when you look at them. But when you actually have a closer look, particularly at the patch panel and really cast your eye over what comes out and what goes in, you realize that there's a whole host of different things you can try with these. And hopefully in those demos, I showed that, you know, it can be really rhythmic, it can be really melodic, it can be really atonal and strange, and it can also come up with sounds that you just wouldn't think of, particularly the subharmonican that deals with subdivisions of harmonics and polyrhythms uh, that are tied to the internal sequences and the internal pitch divisions of the, the VCOs. I've not got anything else like that, even, you know, all the modular gear I've got, I've got nothing like the subharmonican. And whilst I could do things that are similar to the Mother 32 and the DFAM, they wouldn't be exactly the same. And they're mighty convenient because they're modular synths just packaged into these little blocks um, that connect together. You only need one power supply because you can relay power from the little mixer power supply, which I'm showing you on screen at the moment. Um, and then all you need is a set of headphones. So it's really portable as well. So it's a, it's a really great package. I've really enjoyed playing around with the sound studio. Music